This podcast is made possible in part by Tom Culbertson. Tom, thank you so much for joining the Patreon. I really, really appreciate it. If you want to be as incredible as Tom is and help me not go broke from producing this podcast, <laughs> then go over to japankyo.com slash Patreon and sign up for as little as $1 a month. If you join the $3 a month plus alpha tier, you're going to get access to Japanese Plus Alpha, which is a monthly podcast that I produce for the Patreon members. And it's all about the Japanese language. Language. The latest episode is about a very interesting Japanese word that happens to mean both, um, you could say, mortician, I guess, and millionaire. So if you want to find out what that word is and find out why it means those things that it means, then you got to sign up for the $3 a month plus alpha tier. So go check out japankyo.com slash Patreon and sign up today. And once again, thank you, Tom. That makes Doraemon kind of oddly kinky because like... yeah. Like, okay, his oh, body is, is modeled after is so a cat, this is but so he's wrong. a human-made robot with the mind of a human. So, yeah, like, he's just so a wrong. human mind that fell in love with a normal cat. <laughs> yes, this is deeply troubling. <laughs> Santa! Welcome to Ichimon Japan. I'm Tony and... And I'm Ryan. And today we're joined by a special guest, a friend of ours and a former classmate from the University of Hawaii's uh, Japanese Language and Linguistics Master's Program, uh, our good friend, Lin! Hi, guys! Hey, so Hello. today is uh, a special episode of three... Well, it's the second time we've done this because we had, a, in the fake kanji episode, we also had another uh, alum of that master's degree program. Um, yeah. And Christine. Yeah, yeah. We just so get the whole the program in here. Episode. Yeah, well, one by one, I'm working on it. So <laughs> um, so it's it's uh, three uh, people that think way too much about the Japanese language. Way uh, too talking, much. Yeah, talking about the Japanese language. So hopefully at least one person out there wants to listen to this. <laughs> 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 we take things to absurd lengths. So. But that's that's what we do. Uh, but uh, yeah, Ichimon means one question, and uh, every episode we ask one question about Japan. So today's question is, how do you count that in Japanese? So, <laughs> What is the counter for that's? <laughs> that's, that is a very good question. <laughs> um, I, and we're not going to answer that question. I refuse to answer that question. Um, not but safe the, for work. <laughs> Not safe for work. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, so uh, just to summarize here what this question is all about. Uh, in Japanese, there is uh, a way to... Um, uh, okay, so there's a counting thing that happens in Japanese. When you're counting objects, you use special counter suffixes. And depending on what you are counting, the suffix can vary. Uh, and so a lot of times what happens is when you come across something fairly rare or interesting or novel in some way, your question ends up being, how do you count this in Japanese? Because you don't know what the suffix that you're supposed to use with it would be. Um, and, and Lynn, you, you mentioned something about your electronic dictionary before we started. Oh recording. man. Yeah. So, um, I do, I do have an electronic dictionary I bought when I was in Japan, um, and I use it every once in a while. I mean, the internet's been a great resource so far. I don't really have to go for it. But I opened it up today because I was like, huh, I know that I have a little dictionary on counters on it. I wonder if I can use it today. Um, so when I opened it, um, the screen that flashed at me was the counter dictionary screen. So last time I used it, I used it for the exact same purpose, looking up counters. So <laughs> I think that's the yeah. only thing I use this for now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's. I think even Japanese people sometimes they go like, "Wait, how do you count this?" And then, then but there are slightly more generic ways to count things. You know, there's of course the hitotsu, futatsu, mitsu sort of way of counting, which is pretty broad. You can use it for, in a way, pretty much anything. But um, then there's also like the more general ones, like anything small is like iko, niko, ko. Right, that's the suffix. So there's some very widely used ones, but again, sometimes you come up with some examples that you go like, how the heck do you count this? And you just have no idea. So we're going to run through some of these, some that you might actually encounter in some way in your life, like things that 
like actually come up from time to time. And then in the second uh, half of the show, we're going to go into like the even more like fringe sort of things that you will never encounter outside of some sort of fictional context. Um, so let, let's get started with the, let's say, this is easily the one that people will um, come across the most uh, out of this entire thing that we're going to be talking about. But um, Ryan, how about, what is what is the very first counter on our list that we're going to discuss? Our first one is for ohashi yes. or chopsticks, yeah, which is yeah, yeah. one pair of something, in this case, chopsticks, is zen. Zen, exactly. Ichi zen, yeah, yeah. ni zen. Yep, 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 zen. So this is, I think, a lot of times you don't hear zen used, but it's not so uncommon that like people are that surprised by it. Like it, I think there are people that actually use it, but sometimes people just use more generic terms. Um, it's so, one of those uh, things that you use frequently, but you don't really count it that often. I think yeah. the first time I heard this um, was actually the first time I lived in Japan mm -hmm. as a college student um, at the convenience store, or maybe it was mm -hmm. a supermarket. Yeah. Um, and they asked me how many hashi I wanted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's really? the first time I heard it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ohashi I don't nanzen. think I've ever... Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they were just like, Ohashi nanzen. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, from my experience, they never ask. They just shove them in the bag. <laughs> Usually faster than I can, like, tell them I don't need them. Because, like, if you buy three things of food, they just automatically give you three. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times <laughs> that happens. They don't ask. Um, uh, so, yeah, that, that happens. But um, something interesting here so as i was looking into this there are kind of exceptions so for example wadibashi are the split wooden ones the ones that you split open before the the discardable ones right um apparently for those before you split them open ippon nihon sanbon so hon is a counter for long thin slenderish things uh like do you count slender men with hon <laughs> Slender men with <laughs> oh God, I don't know. Um, we'll get into that kind of stuff later, but uh, so yeah, so when, before you split open the the waribashi, apparently ippon nihon hon is okay, but once you split it open, then you're supposed to use ichizen nizen sanzen blah blah blah, and then for like cooking chopsticks, which are like the longer uh, chopsticks used for cooking uh there's different ways to refer to them such as uh hito soroi um or hitokumi or ichigu um and for example hito soroi is uh hito refers to one and then soroi is to kind of like gather something um mm. so it's like one literally i mean it, it you could translate it as a pair that would be a loose translation but yeah, those you would not normally count as ichizen nizen sanzen because they're not for eating a meal so if you're a beginner Japanese learner, you're probably pulling your hair out right now. Yeah, yeah so it's <laughs> specifically a pair that is used for eating a meal. Yeah, yes. although ich for ichigu, the kanji for gu is for tool. So I guess yeah. that would be it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's maybe, I would, I would assume okay. that one is used more broadly. But uh, ichi soroi or the other, oh uh, no, hito soroi and the other one was uh, hitokumi. Uh, hitokumi. The kumi is also that like, implies, a, like a... Yeah. The kumi would mean like, like a, a pair as well yeah, in pair. this context. Yeah, so that implies it's more than one thing coming together to form one set. Um, but I, I do want to point out here that we're going to be like discussing even more of these like weird exceptions and things like that. But th I, I don't think people should, beginners shouldn't be pulling their hair out because really it, you, you shouldn't worry too much about this. This is just, we're taking it to, like we said, like kind of absurd lengths just for the fun yeah. of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> So yeah, just to give our to readers say... a little bit of like yeah. relaxation, I guess. I can't think of good language now. Yeah. Uh, before we did this, I was asking a teacher I work with like weird things, like what would you use for the counter for this? And for, I was about to say the vast majority, but I think it was literally all of them. Her answer was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so even though these exist, Zen's not like a rare one, but like even though these yeah. exist, some of the ones we're going to get into are things nobody really uses. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, yeah, don't worry about it too much. If you have to use Hitotsu Futatsu Mitsu for everything, that's totally okay. That's totally okay. I think totally that'll just okay. make you exactly like every Japanese teenager. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the tip I actually give my students when I, um, when I teach them counters. I'm yeah. like, but don't stress out. Yeah. Worst case scenario, 
一つ二つ、you're fine. If you need、yep. to go ichi ni, you're also good. Don't worry yep, about yep. it. Use your fingers, whatever. Just, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. the important thing is get your message across. And then、yeah. later you can figure out, oh, apparently chopsticks are special. <laughs> <laughs>、uh, all right.、Uh, Lynn, would you like to bring up the next one in, in our、uh, first list here? All right. Yeah. So the next one we have is squid or ika.、Um, <laughs> and we have, and this one I really like this one, is when alive, they are hiki. So i p i k i ni hiki.、Yeah. Um, but at the market, they are high. So. <laughs> Uh, ippai, nihai, sanbai. Yep, yep, yep. So,、um, hiki is the generic term for most animals that are on the smaller side.、Um, and then, hai, for anybody that's gone out drinking in Japan, you know hai maybe, but hai means like a cup. So, for example,、uh, if you want a cup of sake, you might say like ippai, right? So,、um, nihai, sanbai, yonbai, yonhai, gohai, blah, blah, blah. It just keeps going.、Um, so, why the heck are squid called. Cups of squid when they are like considered as an ingredient for food after they've been, you know, killed to be prepared for, for eating. Because clearly,、um, when you buy them at the supermarket, you just scoop them up in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I, I don't know. Like, a lot of these etymologies are shaky at best, but one, one proposed etymology here is that when、uh, prepared like that, when, you know, put out to eat,、uh, it resembles、uh, a tokuri. Uh, which is like a bottle of sake, the, the ones that they're kind of, I mean, I, I agree, they're kind of long and kind of narrowish. They could look like the body of a, of a squid, or maybe they have some general resemblance to a sake cup in some way. So, but yeah, that, that's what it is. The correct version is ipai nihai sambai, blah, blah, blah. Again, I, I don't. I don't know how many people. No, I think this one's fairly well known. I think I've heard people、I、like think, at、yeah. restaurants hear,、uh, say it. So. Yeah, but again, you know, you don't have to get it right to get your message across. Yeah, this one too, also. So, squid also comes as surume,、um, yep. which is just the dried one. And that one is mai. Yeah, yeah. That's because、yeah. it's nice and flat when it's dried. Yep, exactly. Yeah, like when, depending on, <laughs> like for fish, for example, like, you know, you have, it's the same kind of process, like live fish, hiki, and then you start cutting it down and it turns into sashimi and then that turns into kide. So it, it evolves the more you kind of like cut it down and butcher it down. And <laughs> it, it's, yeah, when you look, when you think of it like that, it can be super overwhelming. But when you learn it in context, you know, it, it's not so bad. I wonder if、um, bonito is ippon nihon when it, it becomes the, the dried. Oh. The dried block before it becomes the flakes. It, it, it very well could be. Like another fish that I saw was、um, hirame, which I think in English gets translated to flat fish, I think. I、yeah. think it's a flounder. A、it? flounder. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is a flounder. Yeah, which literally is a kind of flat fish. Yeah, flounder is、right? a flat fish, isn't it? Yeah, and、yes. that I have seen it, if I'm remembering correctly, in, in one of the lists that I was looking at, referred to as mai, which is a, a counter for flat things. So, I, I, I will double check on that. And if I'm wrong, then I will insert a correction. But I'm pretty sure that's what. That, that's kind of funny、written. if it is, because, like, in its habitat on the seafloor, it's flat. But when you catch it and pick it up, it's basically just the same shape as any other fish, except its eyes <laughs> are on the same side. So, they actually, like, take into account what it was like before they caught it. That is I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty flat, though, flounders. Have you. I don't know. Yeah,、so、the, I guess. But I mean, like, because, like, how is it, right? I mean, yeah. True, true. Yeah. If you, turn a, if you turn a flounder on its side, then it looks more fishy ish. <laughs> I just mean, like, there's not that many, like, round fish outside of, like, a puffer. <laughs> true, true, true. Yeah, yeah, blowfish, yeah. <laughs> I feel, I don't know, tuna are pretty round, though. I feel yeah, like. They're more torpedo ish, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, would we count tuna the same as torpedoes then? Um, I would assume <laughs> Ippon Nihon Sambon. Oh, I was really hoping Torpedo would have like some special counter.、Oh, I feel like Torpedoes might be Thai. Thai? Oh, it could be. It very、I、well could be. I feel like if they're launched, they're Thai, but if they're just like on your shelf or whatever, <laughs> then they're.、Poor. Yeah, I have one Torpedo on my shelf, yes. Well, well, you know、yeah. what I mean? Like if they're in storage. <laughs> if they're in storage. See, that, this you guys is what... don't collect torpedoes? <laughs> Sorry, I mean,、no. you know, I kind of gave up that hobby a few years ago when I downsized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know,、oh, I, did, we... yeah I just bought smaller torpedoes. <laughs> fair, fair.、Uh, Ryan, you always have an answer for everything. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Tony from the future here. And I did look a little bit further into this whole fish、uh, thing that we were talking about. I found an article that basically explains it like this. 
once a fish is fished out of the ocean or the river, then it becomes a product, right? It dies and it goes to market and you are selling the fish as an item, not as a living thing. And so because it's an item, you're counting it uh, like it's just any other item, right? You're not counting it as an animal. You're looking at what shape it is. And so you use the appropriate counter. So in the case of a long slender fish, you would use the counter hon, right? Which is used for long slender things like a pencil, for example. So, ippon, nihon, sanbon, right? Ichi, ni, san, one, two, three. And then you put the suffix on after it. In the case of a flounder, like I said earlier, you can use the counter mai once it goes to market because a flounder is a flat fish and mai is used for flat things like papers and tickets. So, you end up with ichi mai, ni mai, san mai right? Interesting little quirk. You just have to keep in mind whether the fish is still swimming around in the water or it's gone to market and it's ready for human consumption. Uh, how about Ryan? You address the uh, next one. I'm glad I got this one because it's my favorite one. So this is the counter for kami or gods because they get mm -hmm. their own counter, which mm -hmm. is hashida. Hashida. So literally... And real quick, uh, I will put out, this yeah. is one I did ask my friend teacher who was mm -hmm. aware there was one for gods, but could not remember what it is and just said, like, how often do you count gods? <laughs> That's, yeah, I asked someone <laughs> else that and they said the same thing. <laughs> That's often the answer you'll get, like, well, but when would you even count that? <laughs> well, you don't count it until you're in that situation. And then, and then what are you going to do when people have you, you know, they're putting pressure on you and they're telling you, come on, come on, you got to count the gods. Come on, come on. What are you going to do then, huh? Well, we're going to tell you what you're going to do. So... <laughs> So hashida literally means like a pillar. Um, so uh, you would count the gods as uh, hito hashida, futa hashida, mi hashida, blah, 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 blah. So it's hito hashida, not hito bashida. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's hito hashida. That's what I, I remember seeing. Um, in, in, I, I made sure to check on that because sometimes there are, you know, phonetic exceptions like that. But yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is a, an interesting one. And, and so I looked a little bit into the history of this. Uh, so apparently this is in the Kojiki, which is the oldest text uh, from Japan. Uh, and that's in the very early 600s, I believe, was when it was uh, finished. Uh, but according to this one article that I was reading, it's not used in the Nihon Shoki, which is the next oldest uh, text, which came out. I don't know, like a dozen years after that one. Huh. Uh, and uh, one explanation for this, and I, I couldn't verify this because I haven't read either text and I don't really intend to because they seem... I mean, they're like written in Chinese, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> I would have to read some modern translation at best. Uh, but the, the, they propose that because um, Hashira is not used in the Nihon Shoki, um, Hashira is an original uh, creation in Japan, this way of counting gods, because Nihon Shoki was intended more for the Chinese audience to, I guess, learn about Japan, this kind of general history of Japan. And so were they to have used Hashira in the Nihon Shoki, the Chinese readers wouldn't have really understood that well, like what that meant. But in the Kojiki, which was meant for internal consumption, then it was used in, in that context. So, interesting. I, I have no idea if this matters, but I know the Kojiki was also written basically to be musical. Like, it's kind of oh. like a poem song thing. So, maybe, I don't know, maybe rhythm had some play in whether they, what word they chose. But it's also supposed to be based more on trying to be Japanese, I know. Yeah, yeah. Th there could be that element to it as well. Yeah. I have no idea. But the Nihon Shoki yeah. was definitely written in archaic Chinese, so it's yeah, not easy yeah. to read nowadays. No, not at all. Um, and then um, another interesting thing that, you know, it's like, why why pillars? Um, so I did a little bit of looking into this, um, and really, this is another one of those kind of like shaky etymologies. Um, there's kind of proposals, but there's nothing super, super definitive. But, um, you know, one, one article that I was reading was linking it back to kind of burial practices with like imperial you know, nobility and like putting up pillars associated with gods. And you can kind of see how like gods are like these central pillars in, you know, Shinto, for example, right? So they're these central figures, uh, metaphorical pillars. So linked back to literal pillars. So maybe there's something there. And there are, you know, uh, celebrations, uh, Matsuri that have still involved pillars. So there's probably something there, but I don't think we could say for sure, for sure. 
Isn't also like hitobashira? Isn't that like a human sacrifice? Also? Oh, yes, yes. yes. That's yes. why I was wondering what the pronunciation was. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Good. Right. Good. And good. Uh, like, yeah. Good. I, good memory. That was a little I, bit more kind of literal, that. though. <laughs> yeah, that is a very literal. Um, yeah, human sacrifice kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so gods are hashira, but there are other ways to uh, count gods. There's za, uh, and. Uh, that kanji is also used for like theaters, um, also to count mountains in some cases. Uh, and I guess you can, there might be an association between, because, you know, gods, I mean, mountains are sometimes considered, you know, gods and all that kind of thing. So maybe there's a link there. Uh, but it seems that when you look into what the counter for God for kami is, uh, hasira really seems to be the most commonly uh, cited one. I like I like za because it kind of implies that all the gods are hanging out, sitting down, like <laughs> drinking and partying as they're like entertained by the um, the happenings of the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. It could. I mean, it's it's really interesting that theater also uses this kanji, or like theater troops and theaters. So I, we have uh, kabuki za, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So I, I'm not sure what the link there is, but that is an interesting quirk of that. They're self-proclaiming uh, themselves to be gods. My guess, I don't, I don't know. But. Maybe the gods sit and watch watch kabuki, so they're they're allowed to like wow. take that, take the za. <laughs> it could be. Before we like go on, I do want to point out or ask because I forgot to ask this earlier. So, Kojiki used hashida. Ko- uh, Nihon Shoki did not, right? According to what I read, yeah. What did Nihon Shoki use then? I couldn't figure that out. I I didn't find okay. a definitive. Probably whatever it was in Chinese. Yeah, what exactly? Yeah, yeah. Because just to to point out here, uh, Chinese does use counters as well, um, to some extent. I don't know if it's to the I same think, extent as Japanese. Though. I think it's actually. You know what? Um, I actually looked this up when I was yeah. teaching counters, and mm-hmm. um, because I I like to um tie things back to English, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was talking about English counters, mm-hmm. um, and how in English we use um, we use counters for uh, mass mass nouns. Mm. Um, but not for count nouns and things like that. Interesting. Um, and in that, it was that all Chinese nouns are mass nouns. Mm-hmm. Therefore, all nouns take counters. Mm. So um, I think that, yeah. And I think in Japanese too, it must be the same. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of counters that are shared between the two. Although probably, I'm guessing that they, a lot of the Japanese counters are tra- taken from from Chinese yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially, well, probably the early ones because once later on they start to, you know, do their own unique things with it. Oh yeah, once yeah. once Japan starts making things up, you know, that's, that's... yeah, <laughs> exactly. Then it's so, all Wasego. No. Yeah, then then it's <laughs> yeah. just a different story, but <laughs> yeah. But I I, I love thank you thank you Lynn. See that that's why we we like having linguists on because they give good answers like that. <laughs> I just now imagine the future is going to be like Ichi Goldo. <laughs> Ichi goddo, ni goddo, san goddo. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Lynn, how about you uh, bring up the next one then? Yep. Uh, so we got robots. Robots. Right. And robots. for robots, we do have dai. Mm-hmm. Um, so ichi dai, ni dai. Um, mm-hmm. And we can also use that one for uh, machines slash vehicles. Mm-hmm. Um, but when robots are similar in appearance to humans, mm-hmm. we use the counter tai. Yeah. Um, although nin can be used if yeah. they uh, really resemble humans. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then for uh, our good friend uh, Aibo, the robot dog, we can use <laughs> hiki hiki yeah. um, and all those small animal counters. Exactly. So this, this brings up something that is going to be coming up again and again, in, especially in the second half of the episode. But um, counters, so generally speaking... You know, in a textbook, you're going to get like this kind of thing equals this kind of counter. But what you start to see once you scratch beyond the surface is that people use language to portray a certain image and nuance and and feeling. And so if you want to portray your pet robot dog as a more real thing, you're more likely to say hiki than die. But if a person really hates robot dogs for some reason and wants to rob them of all their agency, then they're going to make sure to stick to ichi dai ni dai san dai. (laughs) Because that is like the most cold clinical way to refer to a robot or some kind of machine, dai. Um, so yeah, this is a, a thing that's going to come up again and again, I think, uh, like I said, in the second half. I really hope that like in movies like Blade Runner, the translator, like put that kind of like 
discrimination in where like the anti-replicant people keep calling them oh. die and the other people call them neen or something? That's a very good question. And, and it's very possible. I would not be surprised if that was the case. I would be surprised because the translations usually aren't that good, but I feel like well, they should have yeah. been that. <laughs> it depends on the translator. It depends on the translator. So the, the new translation would be, would be... Like the translator of the book might do that, but like movie translations tend to be kind of lazy. <laughs> but like, for example, um, Hiki... Sometimes, like I, I can't remember a specific example, but like an anime or something where you might see this kind of an language used, like a villain might refer to somebody they hate as a hiki to rob them of their humanity, mm -hmm. right? To call them, basically call them animals. So, you know, that kind of creative language usage definitely happens. Um, and it's not that hard to find, especially with hiki, I think. I mean, definitely when I was in high school, I would say, uh, Inu ippiki to imoto ippiki imasu. <laughs> so, um, so, one like, dog and a younger sister. Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a dog and a younger sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're both yeah, yeah. pets. They're both, they're both uh, non human. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, do you still um, say that? <laughs> no, no, I do not say that. No, no. I don't it's know all, if. It's all yeah, in good jest. It's all in good jest. <laughs> appreciate that um <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah that that's comedy too I mean, there's ways to play with these two for comedic effect uh what ryan what's your uh next one okay so the next one is ufos Ooh. or ufos if we're using UFO, japanese as they would say in japanese yeah ufo <laughs> exactly so uh how would we count these so uh, first we need to distinguish, are they instant noodles or are they actual UFOs? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, uh, so I'll explain. Um, what, you know, I, I like to look up Japanese references to see what Japanese people are looking, uh, are saying about these things. So uh, often what happens is I, I end up finding like Yahoo answers in, in, in Japanese because Japanese people have the same kinds of questions that we do oftentimes. Um, and uh, they asked like, how do you count UFOs in Japanese? And the first person to answer, which was the best answer, first they said, ishoku nishoku. Shoku is the counter for meal because there's a very famous instant noodle, which is in the shape of a, a kind of like flying saucer and it's called a UFO. So that was the joke. So, <laughs> but when you're not counting uh, instant noodles, how do you count them, Ryan? Uh, then it could be ki, which means like machine or tai, which is body, I guess. Used for many yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. Tai is many things, exactly. So, uh, ki, iki, niki, sanki, yonki, blah, 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 uh, is a counter that uh, is used for flying vehicles. Like a jet fighter would be an iki, mm. niki, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but ki uh, is also used in the word kikai, which is uh, machine. And then uh, tai is this very um, uh, flexible counter. That is used for many, many things. Um, Lynn, would you like to mention some of the things that Thai is used for? <laughs> oh, man. Um, so we can oh, use so Thai for... is written with the kanji for body. Yeah. Yep. yep. And so I think vaguely it... they are all bodies. <laughs> In a yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Um, so, right. So we had Thai for, um, we can use it for dolls, statues, um, things that look like a human body. Uh, mm -hmm. We can also use them for corpses. Mm -hmm. Um we can also use them for um, types of, what do we say? Uh, types of, of handwriting. Yeah, types oh, yeah, of yeah. calligraphy, um, I guess. Typeface. Calligraphy, typefaces. Yeah. Uh, I like this one. Snowmen, wax models. So things. <laughs> I uh, did not know Chromosomes. <laughs> chromosomes. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. What is it? So statues of Buddha. The large, yeah. the big, the big statues. Um, yeah. Yeah, clay figures, horse pictures. <laughs> yeah, I think that was so pretty funny. One. I'm going to um, also point out, because I've seen this mess up beginners, there's the phrase like itai, which is like, what the heck or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, yeah I don't not think it's counting something, but if it is, yeah, I guess it's itai. counting hex. Itai. <laughs> <laughs> counting hex. Yeah. I feel like, I think that might be, yeah, because I think the kanji is itai. Yeah, it is, it tai. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like so more what, than yeah. once I've seen like itai nandeska or something become like, what is this one body? And I was like, I don't think that's what they're saying. <laughs> not, not quite, not quite. Yeah, yeah. So Thai, so Thai is this very interesting one in that it's used for both anything that's like human-ish, but also very amorphous things. <laughs> yeah. So it is kind of just like shape. <laughs> shape, yeah, literally. Like, uh, like for me, the first thing that comes up, like the way that we say like a celestial body, which mm. you also use Thai for situations like that. Um 
uh, and then like we were saying with UFOs, if you're counting it as a flying vehicle, key. But if you're counting it as a mysterious, unidentified flying object, then you would use tai, i tai, ni tai, san tai, blah blah blah. So yeah, I feel like tai becomes the like we don't know what else to call it, therefore it becomes tai counter. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, again, one of those things where. Uh, it's not a simple one-to-one. It's like the nuance that you want to convey or that you have to convey in the situation uh, might determine which counter you use. Hey guys, Tony here. I've got a few quick things I want to mention and then we'll get back into the rest of the episode. So first of all, if you have a question about Japan or the Japanese language, send it over to ichimon at japankyo.com. We'll do our best to answer your question. And and if we don't have an answer, well, we'll just let you know and we'll uh, tell you we can't answer this, but maybe we can give you some uh, tangential information that may still be of some use to you. So uh, send it over to ichimon at japankyo.com. You can also record yourself in an audio file, send that over, might even use that on the episode also don't forget to follow or subscribe on your podcast app uh that is the number one free thing you can do to uh support the show because generally subscribing to a show boosts the rankings on the podcast app and that means that more people are probably going to find the show so you're helping the show grow and you're ensuring that you get all the new episodes as soon as they come out and finally don't forget to check out the latest episode of japan station episode 65 it features a conversation i had with dr jan bardsley who just released a book all about michael and geisha so michael are geisha apprentices uh the book is called michael masquerade it's a really fun interesting book a lot of history there a lot of analysis on what the life of a geisha and a michael is like and art and a whole bunch of other stuff so uh go check that out japanstationpodcast.com or wherever you get your podcasts oh and don't forget uh you can follow on facebook and twitter at japankyo news if you haven't done so yet then why not check that out all right so Let's get back into the rest of the episode. All right, so um, let's get into the more um, fantastical stuff. The stuff that really in no sort of real world context would you ever have to uh, count. But if you perhaps like reading fairy tales or myths or something, then this might be relevant to you. Uh, so let, let's start with centaurs. So centaurs, yeah, centaurs are just all over Japan, man. They're all over. Yeah, yeah. Like these like half horse people, they're all over the place. But um, sometimes they're normal centaurs. Sometimes they're reverse centaurs. <laughs> reverse centaurs. <laughs> there are some yurukyara that are kind of <laughs> reverse centauri. Um, yeah, yes, that's but true. Just to just to clarify for anybody who's uh, rusty on their mythology here, uh, centaurs are the ones that have the horse bodies. Like horse lower bodies and uh, torso upwards, they have human parts. Um, Real quick thing, because it's kind of funny. Yeah. There was a shop in Osaka when I used to live there that at Halloween, they put horse masks on all their mannequins because they looked creepy. <laughs> and then when Halloween ended, they just left them on because it was like they were in the window and they looked so creepy. Everyone stopped and stared at them. So I think they're like, oh, it's good advertising. Let's just do this forever now. It's, I mean, they're yeah. not wrong. Yeah, yeah. They weren't. Catchy. Everyone stopped and looked at it and took photos. Were they like suits, for example? Like what, what kind of. It would just be whatever like their like seasonal clothes was. So like in the summer, it's like like light clothes and Hawaiian shirts. And then other times it's like winter clothes. I love that. But yeah, they just mysteriously appeared probably like late spaces. September and then just remained on forever. Yep, yep, yep. You're like salaryman suits and horse heads. Uh, uh, all right, so how the heck would you count a centaur in Japanese, right? Do you count it as a human? Do you count it as a horse? It depends well, on how racist you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so one one article that I found... Uh, argued that it was nin, which is the counter for people. So mm. uh, the counter for people is kind of quirky in that hitori, futari, one person, two person is kind of an exception. But then after that, you go san nin, yo nin, go nin, roku nin, blah, 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 blah. So one person, two person, three person, blah, 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 right? So uh, nin is the general counter for people. But if you're counting horses, then you would use the counter for, uh, generally speaking, big animals um which is to uh so ito ni to so 
Again, this article was saying it's more human than horse, therefore we should use nin, but there really aren't that many occasions to count it anyway, so uh. <laughs> that's kind of what it ended on. Um, I will say, I asked my uh, fellow teacher here who kind of said also that you don't count them. Yeah. I don't, like, I know in real life that's true, but I feel like with the world of anime, manga, and video games, they're not really that rare to encounter. They're not real. Yeah. Yep. But, yeah, they, I've seen them pop up in like a fantasy anime or something like that. Yeah, yeah, because my friend was like, oh, that'll never happen. I was like, but they're kind of common in fiction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are definitely situations where you would have to, like, I don't know, in some kind of Lord of the Rings type battle where yeah, yeah, you yeah. have the elves fighting a thousand centaurs, right? So, yeah. I'm going to be definitely. outed as like not a Tolkien fan. Did Lord of the Rings have centaurs? N- I, no, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. No, I don't think okay. so. Okay. That's why I said lord of the rings ish and not lord of the rings okay yeah, yeah but like traditional <laughs> fantasy does i think D yeah. does yeah D yeah, yeah, yeah. does have centaurs yeah yeah so um th- that I know it does, also they're medium even though they shouldn't be medium <laughs> <laughs> oh dear no i i don't know much about that so i can't say but um yeah that got me curious about minotaurs for example right um i couldn't find anything that somebody had written about minotaurs unfortunately but um again it's that same kind of thing minotaur has the head of like an ox or a bull or something like that head a body of a human Mm. so it's that same kind of argument like do you consider it more of a human or do you consider it more of a like beast kind of thing right i don't know that's it seems open to interpretation so i feel like for me the difference would be like can it talk (laughs) right fair fair right 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 and and we're getting centaurs be- always yes, minotaurs usually yes, but sometimes I think they're more just like Mah! and then attack you. I th- yes. Well, I think right because for like the original Greek myth, right? The labyrinth, like, right? He yeah. yeah, minotaur would be very happy to kill you. Yes, yeah, um, and would not you would not be able to logic your way out of that. So I feel like maybe not so much on the talking. Right, right. And so here here we're getting into this whole thing of like it's not just whether it's a big animal or whether it's a human. Does it behave like a human? Is it friendly towards humans? Is it nice? Is it aggressive? Is it more monstery? Is it more animally? Like there's all these kind of like intangible factors that go into determining whether we should say it's mean or toll or something else. Uh, and so I found this article that was written by, I think it was a woman. She was a writer uh, and she tells this story of uh, telling, I think it was like a fairy tale or something to her child and uh the child asks i think it was oni demons like how do you count an oni and so that got her to look into some of this stuff uh because she couldn't answer it uh, right like on the spur of the moment she had to do a little bit of research and so this is what she kind of came up with for some of these more um kind of fictional supernatural uh beings basically she 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 proposes a distinction between um, the the creatures that are more like kind of like friendly towards human and the, the ones that are more like aggressive, not nice, kind of mean towards humans. So, so does Shrek start as Hiki and then become mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like you could definitely argue that as as your uh, perception of ogres or him in general changes. Yes. From the beginning of the story to the to the end of the story. Yep, yep. It it all really comes down to can you make the argument? <laughs> <laughs> what and, is what is your perception of this? Positive, neutral, or negative? Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so let let's get into this this distinction then. Um, how about uh, Ryan? Would you mind? Uh, do you see the list with uh, that begins with Tenchi? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, could you could you explain uh, these uh, the good ones, so to speak? Okay, okay, okay. So th- the following ones are counted as hitori, futari, sanin, etc. Mm-hmm. So like we people. have yeah, yeah, like people. So these are mm-hmm. seen as human-like or friendly to humans. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have tenshi, which is angel, mm-hmm. ningyo, which is mer person. <laughs> yeah, so the typical depiction of like the little mermaid, right? Uh, yeah, fish yeah, on yeah. the bottom, person on the top. <laughs> Ma Medo is also around though recently. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah. Uh, Yosei, which is fairy. Yeah. Kobito, which we translated as dwarf, but I think they're a little different. <laughs> yeah, they're they they're any kind of diminutive fantastical creature. 
And the last one I kind of have, I guess, an issue with because it's written as wizard or magician, but like they're just people. So yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but in this article, this person included wizards and magicians into this mean person classification, and I, I had the same thought. I was like, but yeah, they are people that have magical powers. Like, like th- that. And also, like, I know most of these are like fantasy, and we know they don't exist. But yeah. in traditional Japanese history, they thought Mahotsukai did exist. Yeah, well, there's yeah sorcerers in, in the sort like of like Kimiko is sources. a wizard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think also though, like, but they were like of the different like subclass, right? Mm-hmm. I think so. Like, yeah. I think the the distinction here is with like the Western kind of wizard, uh, magician kind of idea. That I think like they weren't talking about anything specifically Japanese because, like you said, yeah, there are some kind of like magician type. Uh, figures in Japanese history and tradition and folklore, but I don't think that was what was being referred to. I have a feeling that was this by the woman you said researched for her yeah. kid? Yes. I don't know. Maybe she just didn't know wizards are just normal humans who study magic. <laughs> that's that's the vibe that I got. Yeah, 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 exactly. So anyway, so all of these are generally, you know, good. They, they resemble humans more than some of these other creatures. Uh, they're friendlier towards humans. Uh, so all these factors go into determining that we should use the counter nin for person to mm. count these creatures. Now, of course, there's there's the evil wizards and evil mermaids and blah blah blah. There's there's definitely these exceptions, fallen angels, I, blah blah blah. You know. So I am curious what story she was reading because at least in traditional Western stories, fairies usually aren't friendly. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's a lot of those in like the classic European yeah stories. So. I think, right, because, but then we use the word yose, right? Yeah. For, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like yose, they can be mischievous in Japanese, mm-hmm. but they're not necessarily like unfriendly a lot of the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I do have the perception they're more prank. Like, I mean, Western fairies are also prankster, but I think they're like leaning bad, where Japanese ones are pranksters, but leaning good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, some of the nuances in the word yose and some of these other terms don't carry over the same way in English, right? They They're kind of maybe in some cases simplified versions of the original and so yeah, yeah not yeah. not not a one to one thing but this is what she proposes okay so um but then i i'm okay with calling all of these hito or not yeah. hito, uh, nin by the nin. way yeah 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 mm-hmm. so yeah yeah i'm i'm okay i'm okay with it but uh i, I would the, think it would be fun to call an angel wa or something though but <laughs> <laughs> you have wings yep. you're fine yeah i mean if we're calling rabbits by this wing counter thing and then we get to eat angel meat yeah then we get to eat oh. angel meat yes <laughs> yep yep so if we count them by wa we can hunt them and eat them is that at least that their is, wings i mean once yeah. they lose their wings i think they just become people yeah, yeah. I, see, I see i see yeah. I see. that is the general argument proposed by some people uh, that we covered in our rabbit meat episode which would be one or two episodes ago so go listen to that all right so and then the other group that she proposes the same woman that uh was asked by her child like how do you count oni uh ryan would you mind uh covering this other group as well sure yeah. so here we have oni which is a type of demon sometimes translated mm-hmm. as like an ogre yep which we're using piki, so same as like small animal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Akuma, which is demon or devil, also using piki. The next one surprises me, which is dragon. Do you mm-hmm. using piki? I, I mean, I don't know if I've ever had to use it, but that's what she says. <laughs> yeah, for me, like piki usually means small, and dragons are not small. Yeah. I think you can also actually, um, and this is me looking at my dictionary, mm-hmm. you can also use do as in ichi do and do to count dragons. You got ichi do. Huh. Yeah. yeah. That, that definitely. Yeah, because uh, I saw the koi no bori, which is this kind of like oh, yeah, flagish yeah. type thing that people put up for decoration for um, kodomo no hi, boys' day, they sometimes, or children's day. Um, because Koi, the fish, right? There's the whole legend with the turning into the dragon thing. And so apparently you count those Ryu as well. Oh, okay, okay. Apparently, apparently. That's one thing that I saw. But um, I'm also su- I can logic that. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I can logic that. <laughs> I'm also surprised these are listed as like not friendly because... So in Japanese, there's Ryu and there's Doragon. Mm-hmm. And Ryu, which is the one they're using here, is usually like the friendly goddish one where Dr- Doragon is like the scary monster one. Yeah, there definitely. There's that too. So her proposal, really, and I, I don't quite 
agree with the distinction of friendly versus unfriendly. Um, I definitely do think that there is something to the whole, like, does it look very humanish or not? Um, I think the average Japanese person would definitely be influenced by that. But there is one, one more there that you didn't mention yeah, yeah. in that list that I think is really, really interesting and, and important to mention in a way. So please go, go ahead. So the last one is Han Gyojin. Yeah. Which is which... reverse mer person. <laughs> a creature That's with a human bottom half and a fish top half. <laughs> yeah, so, so again, yeah, exactly. Uh, so instead of the classic mermaid or mer person where it's the fish on the bottom and the person on the top, it's the other way around. Uh, so fish, human legs and fish face. Um, <laughs> and apparently this one does not. No, to this person, first of all, they're not friendly towards humans. And second of all, they don't resemble humans enough to warrant a nin. They are pikis. They are hikis. Um, so I was very confused by this one because I didn't know that. First of all, I didn't know Han Gyojin were so like mean towards humans. Um, <laughs> I've never met one. Like, I'm okay with them not being nin because I assume their brain is more of a fish brain. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Well, then again, my, I'm sticking with my criteria of like, can they talk? So yeah, I right, would be more sympathetic right. to Oni and Akuma too. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. just fair, reminds fair. me of the whole uh, Momotaro episode where... Oh, goodness. Yeah, yeah. We did a whole episode about Momotaro. And one of the things that we highlight there is that maybe the Oni, the demons, which are always painted as the villains, were not so bad. So in that case, they were the victims. And uh, I think it might be okay to not use hiki on them, right? Maybe yeah. they use neem, maybe, maybe. You know? Fair, fair. Yeah. There's also that story. Um, do you guys know it? It's I think it's the uh, Naita Akaoni, the red oh, red oni I've heard that of cried. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard. Um, of it, yeah. I wonder if that one is um, Hiki or I th- Nin. I think that one was mentioned in the oh. article. Story. Yep. Okay, story. Exactly. Story. Yep. So yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. So even that same person that we keep referring to, the lady that was telling her kid the story, she mentions that story where the oni is actually good, right, and says Nin for that one rather than hiki which is for the but she chooses hiki so she's got like oni sabetsu going on (laughs) discrimination yeah sabetsu discrimination so again this keeps coming back but it really is the kind of image that you want to portray of the thing that you are counting right i will say in case listeners don't know the appearance of these uh the traditional oni is basically muscular human with red or blue skin yeah, yeah. They might have a horn they got or two. Horns but too. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Have they, they have one or two. I the best yeah. image I can think of is like in the early <laughs> Dragon Ball Z episode. Yeah, yeah. When Goku falls to hell. Yeah. No, he or falls H-fil. to H F I L. Yeah, H Phil, H Phil. <laughs> <laughs> they usually also have that um what is it, the Kunabo, the um like big metal club. Oh club, yeah, yeah, big yeah. That metal big... club with the spikes on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And they might have like a yeah. tiger loincloth or something like that. Akuma can vary a lot depending on the type. They Definitely. could be humanoid or they could be very monstrous. Yeah. It's true. So um, the same lady then brings up the question of what about Doraemon? Um, I asked my friend about Doraemon too. Oh, okay, okay. So well, hang on, let me explain and then I'll, I want to see what your friend says. But for anybody that's not aware of the, who Doraemon is, but Doraemon, very, 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 very well-known, popular uh, animated character in Japan. He's a blue cat. Uh, he's a robot from the future. He doesn't have ears and he doesn't have fingers. He's got round little balls for hands. And uh, like I said, he's a robot cat. From and the yet future. he can hold things. Yep. He's got little <laughs> magical sticky hands, I guess. Um, <laughs> and so that raises the question, right? He's a cat, he's a robot, but he's totally sentient. He can speak, um, and he's, he's totally intelligent and he's nice. So do we count him as a person? Do we count him as a robot? Do we count him as a cat? Do we count him as something else? <laughs> and in right? the show, there's only the one Doraemon, but he's from the future where we presume he was mass produced. So they do have multiple Dora- <laughs> so Doraemon, Doraemon. The- <laughs> The, that's totally possible. And the situation that I came up with in my head was that every episode Nobita, which is the human boy that is uh, Doraemon came back in time to help Nobita. So Nobita always like gets some tool, something from the future that ends up creating some crazy situation because it's some tool from the future. And so my, my head canon is that Nobita one day gets a device that duplicates Doraemon and then he has to count them for some reason. So... <laughs> Do you guys know about why Doraemon looks the way he does? Uh, I'm not sure. He's supposed to be easy to draw for kids, isn't he? Um, well, I mean, his his backstory is that he was actually originally yellow. Oh. Um, and then he fell into the ocean. 
And then I guess the yellow got washed away. Oh. Um, and then also he originally had ears. Yeah, and then oh. mice ate them. Um, and the mice ate them. So he <laughs> is a robot cat uh, with no ears and that is but, terrified of mice. And apparently I, I wonder, how ears... did the mice eat them? Did he just yeah. like lay down and put up no resistance while some mouse was I think, chewing? I think he was like he was like passed out because he was in the ocean and he got like washed over to sea oh, okay. and then the mice ate his ears. And, and so, apparently trauma. he has organic flesh over his robot skeleton. He's a Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a literal Terminator. He went back into the future. <laughs> he's a reverse Terminator. He's training Nobita to help the machines overthrow the humans in the future. Goodness. All right. <laughs> or so, overthrow the mice. So what is the conclusion this woman comes to with uh, with uh, with Doraemon? I, I, I think it was that she, she argues it's Hiki, right? Um, let's see. So what is oh, it? No. According to the article, no, Doraemon is Hitori Futari. Oh, yeah. Doraemon is, yeah, Hitori Futari. So she counts Doraemon as a person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although in the comic, because she does post the comic here, mm-hmm. um, Do- Doraemon, like Nobita-kun does say, um, Ippiki, mm-hmm. um, and Doraemon gets really mad. Oh, Ooh. And advocates for himself. And it goes, no, I am Hitori. Wow. No, I love so, that. I love that. Huh. Yeah, because he says uh, I can speak. I, ha- I you know I can walk on two legs, um, and I live like a like a oh, person. Oh, right? has got that centaur racism too, because they got four legs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he goes. He goes with Hitori for himself. Oh. Right? So that is what he says. Although I think his girlfriend, um, uh, Doraemon's girlfriend, is that yeah. one. Mi-chan, that? Mi-chan, Mi-chan, yeah, Mi-chan. Mi-chan. Yeah. Um, is that one cat? So, yeah. if, but if she is picky, eat picky. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean for for their relationship? Well, isn't she non sentient? She's just a normal cat, right? She's just a normal cat. Yeah. Okay. So, that, so is it cross cross makes, counter? Relationship? Oh my god! I don't want to think about this. That makes Doraemon <laughs> kind of oddly kinky because, like, yeah. Like okay, his oh, body is, is modeled after is so a cat, this is but so he's wrong. a human-made robot with the mind of a human. So yeah, like, he's just so a wrong. human mind that fell in love with a normal cat. <laughs> yes, this is deeply troubling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope there's someday they make like a mature Doraemon where nobody's like, dude, like you're not actually a cat. What's with you? <laughs> like we need to have a sit down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, like it's All essentially right. just a body they put you in. We could put you in a human body. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, uh, but yeah, so. oh, my man. friend also went with Hitori for the Raimon. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yep. Uh, all right. So, um, one one last area that I want to highlight, and this is just to drive home the point of how people do whatever the heck they want to do uh, in order to convey what they want to convey, uh, and it it comes down to this whole distinction of like hiki and to. Um, so again, hiki is for generally what you're going to see in a textbook is that hiki is for small animals, toy is for big animals, and that's the end of the story. Well, I found an academic article on the Ritsumeikan University website that analyzed tons of examples of real world usage of hiki and to, and it looked at specific animals and how people were describing them. And it was a very interesting thing. It's completely in Japanese. I will include a link there if anybody reads it Japanese and wants to look into that. But um, one thing that they point out is how to, literally the kanji for head, but it's used for big animals usually, also seems to carry this nuance of um, an animal that has some use- usefulness to humans. So therefore, you know, for example, cows and livestock like, you know, sheep and uh, horses and uh, these kinds of animals have this to in part because they're also like, you know, useful to, to humans. Um, they also bring up the example of um, uh, real world examples where guide dogs are described as to because they, again, they are useful to humans in some way, although guide dogs tend to be bigger. So they also fulfill that sort of requirement. But again, to has this other slight nuance to it that uh, oftentimes I don't think are, is explained in, um, in a textbook. So um, also to used in these more sort, of, more sort of like formal, maybe government type documents where they don't want to convey any sort of other nuance. It's very clinical, sort of like one head of cattle. So yeah, there's these other nuances that people might use these counters for that most people are not really thinking about so much uh, when they're using them. So again, what do you want to convey? Then you decide what your counter will be. 
And uh, that can be very confusing for a, a beginner learner, but um, you don't have to know it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a big one, right? Yeah. You don't have to know it. Yeah. Although uh, koalas are tall, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. But they're not big and they're not necessarily useful. Yes. <laughs> so that's... Yeah. Although, so one question, what about Pokemon? Okay, so yeah, that, that I did look into that a bit. Um, so what I found was um, in one Yahoo Answers, in Japanese person answering, um, they said hiki, or the, generally speaking hiki, but um, tai is also used in some situations. Um, I, I think they mentioned something about when you exchange Pokemon, something like that, like Tai is the the counter that gets used in those situations. I was I guess gonna say I've never game. really played Pokemon, but it has to like it's about collecting, so there has to be some screen that says how many you have, right? Yes, probably. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah there is, and I I never played it in Japanese, so I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I did, it but it was like 12 years ago, and I don't remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Picky, yeah. but I can definitely see people talking about them as Tai. Yeah, I feel Tai um, like is more inclusive since... to get all of them because some of them are bigger yeah. than well i feel like it's actually because they see them as tools yes because <laughs> they battle them yes yes that that gives them the justification to use them like little animals for their own pleasure but yeah. they're useful right. to humans so shouldn't they be tall you know yeah. yeah i mean but there's also they're also in the wild though right so like yeah they can attack you uh, yeah so i mean from what i've can... seen it's usually the human that attacks them i mean you're not wrong but... <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> so inconsistencies across the board and that's that's language for you that is language. i wish they all had like their own like individual ones like a pikachu is a ichi piki or ichi pika ichi pika I, yeah I, i'm totally for that so i have i have ni pika yeah, yeah. Ni pika in my um right on my team yeah would, would it be all, all along the evolution line then? yeah his whole family one pikachu and one pichu <laughs> right okay okay Ippi, nipi, all right sorry. all right Oh, no, no, that's a bad... No, never mind. No, 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 no. Never mind. Never mind. Um, That's a different counter. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Oh, goodness. So, um, yeah, again, I mean, not to, like, beat a dead horse here, but counters, just learn what it says with the textbook. You start there, you know, you just, you know, big things, little things, blah, blah, blah. And then the more you use language, the more you realize that you can be creative with it, you can have fun with it, you can play around with it, and you can, as long as you can back up your ideas, you can argue that a Pokemon should be a Neen, right? I, I don't know. There's definitely some Pokemon that should be Neen, right? Meowth can talk, right? Yeah, yeah Meowth is Meowth totally rational, totally talks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, there's plenty of Pokemon that are totally rational, but can't speak English or Japanese or whatever the human language is, right? So... That's true. Yeah, I don't like what what about the chances that uh, you know, the heal, the nurse pokemon, right? Yeah. They're working, they're working pokemon. Yeah. They are uh, I'm pretty sure if you have a job, you get the uh, you get to choose your counter, which they probably choose Itori. Okay, okay, all right. I, I'm in favor of this like self-identification <laughs> society. <laughs> yes, you have to. Oh god. You should ask a pokemon, you know, just like Doraemon. What counters? Yeah, yeah, just like Doraemon arguing yeah. for his Hitori, you know, yeah, you should yeah, ask yeah. a pokemon, what counter should I use for you? That's Exactly. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Exactly. So, there you go. Uh, some pokemon would be like, you know what? Piki's totally fine, and other pokemon would be like, you know what? Hey, I'm a working you can pokemon. Use it. Yes. <laughs> I'm a working Pokemon. Yeah. Hitori. Yeah, yeah. Hitori or like a guide dog tool, right? You know, like so. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Though, I mean, I think if you ask him, his answer is just going to be Pika Pika, no matter what. So. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's kind of like Piki Piki. So I guess we're <laughs> we're, we're pretty much there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's where they came from. Is someone was asking them, but they could only respond with their name. <laughs> oh goodness! All right. Yeah. So there you go. That is, uh, that is counters. There are so many other uncommon and peculiar counters, but um, yeah, maybe that's for another day. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ryan, anything else you want to point out before we finish off? I'm good. All right. Lynn? Um, I guess, let's see. Uh, for me, so as a, as a language teacher, mm-hmm. right, because I am officially employed to teach language mm-hmm. um, for my high school students, if you can argue and convince me for a counter, I'll probably take it as correct. That's how <laughs> I, I feel that. about it. Yeah, definitely. Like, if you if you can go, you know what, but I think of it this way, I'll be like, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, if yeah, a yeah. student was like, Pikachu ga Ichi Pika, because I asked him and he just said Pika. 
You know what? I'd be like, if you can articulate that, go ahead. I mean, if you know, again, if I have a student that's,、uh, you know, we're doing the the family unit, right?、Yeah. And they're like,、um, Chichi to haha ga, you know, kazoku wa san nin desu, right? Three people in my family, Chichi to haha to watashi desu. And then, ato wa imoto ga ippiki imasu,、yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I got, I got one younger sister also、yeah. alongside my regular family, and they use the piki, and I'm like, all right, all right.、Um, I will take it. Yeah. No, if they can say that, then they obviously understand the whole thing that、yes. they're saying. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah I, I would、yes. be totally fine with that. That is just showing their mastery of the language. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I'd be like, okay, you mastered it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. No, that is the comedy. Teach the next class. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think maybe when we're dealing with issues of like human versus animal and that kind of thing, like things get a little bit or a lot more. Kind of gray, but when you're talking about more like specific, like concrete objects, like maybe,、um, I don't know, eco, like small things,、um, ipon, I think there's less、uh, confusion there in this sort of like, oh, but that's not a human or blah, blah, blah. But then again, you can also argue that, like, I don't know, what is a Uh, a snake should be ippon because I, I, I don't think they are alive or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's a dried snake, yeah, right? Yeah. Like those,、uh, the sea snakes they sell in the Okinawa true, markets. True, 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 yeah. So, then, yeah, ippon all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I do think that, in a general sense, when you're talking about inanimate, you know, more concrete things, there's less of this sort of ambiguity to it. Definitely, definitely.、Yeah. All right, so、uh, I think we'll leave it at that.、Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for your wonderful input, as always. And uh, we'll uh, see you next time. All right, thank you for inviting me. 